like to talk with you folks today about a very special week that I enjoyed a couple of weeks back when it comes to both uh, visual astronomy and astrophotography. It was unseasonably warm here where I live for October. And as Monday came and I was going throughout the day, I noticed as I looked out at the sky that the sky was not only clear, but the atmosphere seemed very, very stable. And so being an amateur astrophotographer, I thought to myself, well, gee, I don't know how many more of these days I'm going to have before the weather turns bad for the year. So I thought, I probably ought to get out in my backyard observatory and uh, do some uh, imaging tonight. So I got out there on Monday night and I decided to take an image of the great galaxy in Andromeda, M31, and of course it's satellites M32 and M110. Well, when I processed it the next day, I obviously got excited about astrophotography again. Those of you who do astrophotography will know how that happens when you feel like you've taken a pretty decent image. And as Tuesday rolled on, I noticed again that the sky was clear and everything seemed pretty stable. So I thought, well, I think I'll do this again. Uh, again, the reasoning being, I don't know how many more of these nights I have. So out to my observatory, I went for a second night in a row and I decided to image M33, the galaxy in Triangulum. That was a little bit more of a challenge because it's, uh, you know, it's a lot dimmer and it's actually a lot smaller than the great galaxy in Andromeda, but I'm pretty pleased with the image that I got with the equipment that I used. Well, Wednesday came and there were uh, high cirrus clouds and I thought, man, okay, well, yeah, I've done pretty good uh, for this year and uh, I was getting ready to kind of wrap things up from my backyard observatory for this year. And then Thursday came. And as the day wore on, I noticed the, the skies were looking a lot like Monday and Tuesday again. You know, a clear uh, sky, um, stable atmosphere. And I thought, you know, this might be the last night I have an opportunity to do this. So I entered my observatory at 8 p.m. And it's interesting because when I got in there, I thought, you know, I want to do something different tonight. Instead of shooting one image, I'm going to shoot a number of images. And at this point, I didn't know exactly what I was going to shoot. But I thought, you know what, I'm going to spend the night out here because I didn't have any uh, appointments the next day for my work as a coach. So I started with uh, the globular cluster uh, in Hercules, M13. A kind of a summer object and then of course I worked my way across the sky. I went to M57 next, the Ring Nebula, and then I went over to Volpecula and did M27, uh, the Dumbbell Nebula. And While I'm in the vicinity of Cygnus I decided to do the Eastern Veil Nebula and by this time it's well after midnight and <laughs> I'm looking up there and all of a sudden I see this familiar sight. Uh, one of the first things I noticed is a young boy in the winter sky, the Pleiades, and I thought ah, I'm gonna shoot the Pleiades. Well, you know where I'm going with this story. By the time I get done with the Pleiades, Orion is, you know, front and center in the sky. And I thought, oh boy, the great nebula in Orion. So I finished off my adventure that night with uh, M42 and left my observatory at 5 a.m. <laughs> I'm actually glad I didn't have any appointments the next morning. <laughs> What I'd like to do now is I would like to show you the images I took uh, during that special week. And for those of you that are interested, I would like to show the, you know, the data, the data points. Uh, some of you may be interested in, uh, you know, how I took the pictures that I did. And when I'm done, I'd like to maybe circle back uh, here to the office and just uh, share some uh, closing observations with you. So I hope you enjoy the images I took during that special week.
Well, I hope you all enjoyed my images of the starry sky. It brings me a tremendous amount of joy when I not only take those images, the process itself, uh, the nights in my observatory, but it's always fun to share my images with other people. And again, those of you out there who do astrophotography will know uh, of what I speak. I wanted to address a question that a lot of people have asked me. Uh, Mark, I see you're using a, an older Celestron telescope and an old DSLR, and uh, you know, why don't you, you know, update your gear to uh, to a more modern, cooled uh, color camera, or even uh, you know, a mono camera with some filters, and do uh, LRGB photography? Well, those are fair questions. The answer, just very simply, is that uh, the equipment I have is the equipment I have. And uh, like many of you out there, I have many, many interests uh, that call for my time and attention uh, in life. And uh, I guess I could, you know, step up and spend more money on astrophotography, but I don't really feel a need. See, um, I've kind of found my happy place when it comes to astrophotography. And it may be very modest uh, in some people's estimation, but I'm happy. I'm really happy with the equipment that I have and, uh, you know, exploring its capabilities. Yeah, I have friends that uh, have telescopes and mounts. Just the telescope and the mount together will cost way more money than my observatory, everything in it, plus all the astronomical gear that I have owned in my entire life. And they take gorgeous uh, pictures of the night sky. And you know what? I'm happy for them. I really am happy for them. Their images bring a lot of joy to me. And they are experiencing uh, their interest in the night sky on their terms. And I applaud that. Life is about finding out what makes you happy as an individual and then setting out in life to enjoy those things on your terms. Everything in life is not a competition. Uh, at least it shouldn't have to be. It's about finding joy in the things that you do. And so I thought that that was just important uh, as a point to make. And there's one last thing I want to talk about quickly. Uh, there was one more very special night uh, during that very special week. It was Friday evening. I had my final uh, star party scheduled at Pleasant Valley Observatory in my backyard. And over the years, I have hosted numerous groups to my backyard observatory to either star BQs, as we call them, where we have a nice dinner and view the sky, or just a star party. And I had my last star party scheduled for that Friday evening. And I had the group over, and we looked at uh, everything from Saturn to, uh, you know, M31. And... Um, I don't know if there is a more beautiful feeling that I can remember in my life than watching a person put their eye to the eyepiece for the very first time and look at Saturn. The, the expressions of wonder and joy and, you know, pulling away from the eyepiece and saying, is that, is that real? That, that can't be real. That looks, that looks fake. Am I really looking at Saturn? And seeing the childlike wonder in another human being's face. Those moments bring me a tremendous amount of joy. In fact, maybe I ought to just end with this. I have discovered that one of life's truly important points and important truths, I guess, is what I want to say, is this. Do find what makes you happy in life. Do pursue that on your terms. But if you really want to be happy to a whole nother level, take the things that bring you joy and share them with other people. Therein lies life's greatest joy. It's when we share what has meaning and joy to us and lift other people through those efforts that we experience joy on a whole nother level. It raises that level of joy exponentially. With that, may you all enjoy the starry sky on your own terms, in your own unique ways. Clear skies, everyone.